Hello, everyone. Um, today, I wanted to talk a little bit about biocuration at the uh, Protein Data Bank, uh, focusing on, of course, certain aspects of it, uh, you know, given the time constraint. Um, uh, just a bit of a history, uh, Protein Data Bank is the first open access digital biological data resource. It was founded in 1971 with just seven protein structures. It has since become a single global archive for experimentally determined structures for uh, proteins, nucleic acids, viruses, and macromolecular machines. Um, it now give, gives open access to over 200,000 experimentally determined structures. Uh, since 2003, the archive is managed by the Worldwide Protein da Data Bank Collaboration, um, including centers in the US, um, uh, Europe, and Asia. Uh, it is uh, accredited by the Core Trust Seal and Global Data uh, by Data Coalition, and it, of course, adheres to the, uh, to the FAIR principles. Um, the, sorry for the format mix-up. Uh, the data in the PDB archive um, is very diverse and uh, complex. Uh, the structural biology is a fast-evolving field, uh, thanks to the advances in uh, data collection instruments and detectors in particular, uh, improved sample preparation, delivery systems, um, data processing and analysis algorithms, and of course, increased computing power. Um, for instance, uh, cryo-electron microscopy methods now allow to achieve uh, obtain structures of a much, much higher resolution that was never possible before. Um, and other experimental techniques such as uh, for example, X-ray, uh, free electron lasers, uh, serial crystallography, hybrid methods, high throughput methods are also uh, rapidly evolving, contributing a lot of uh, very important, very interesting, interesting structures to the PDB archive, and enha enhancing our knowledge of biology and biological processes. So, of course, in order to be able to properly uh, represent and archive such a diverse data coming from the various experimental techniques. Uh, we need to set um, standards for data deposition and archiving uh, that relates to the model files themselves, uh, associated metadata, um, associated, uh, you know, experimental data. What kind of data? Think, you know, what kind of data should be preserved and archived to a particular, to describe properly a particular structure from a particular experimental technique. Uh, we also need to develop dictionaries uh, to archive the data, including uh, 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 value names, value types, uh, what uh, items should be mandatory, uh, defining boundary. Uh, conditions for uh, values uh, and enumerations. And of course, with such a diverse uh, experimental data, uh, the validation is the key uh, to ensure the data that we receive are um, reliable and reproducible, so we need to set methodology, uh, criteria, and software tools for proper data validation. Uh, of course, we are not doing it alone. We use recommendations from various uh, community experts. Uh, we work together with uh, various working groups and task forces uh, to help us to set those uh, criteria and um, standards. Uh, since 2014, the master PDB archival format is so-called uh, PDB XMM CIF. Format. It is a global data standard for representing macromolecular structures and associated metadata. Uh, the dictionary, the MMCF dictionary, is managed by the Worldwide Protein Data Bank and MMCF Working Group. It is flex the, the format is flexible. It can accommodate structures of any size and complexity. It allows for automation. It can be easily parsed, searched, and edited by a computer. Um, it can um, define data types, boundary conditions, enumerations, and thus uh, can regulate and validate the data, as shown here in this example. Um, and um, it is also extensible. It can support uh, developing, developing methodologies. So we use um, dictionary extensions to capture method-specific information to accommodate diverse data uh, from various experimental techniques, like sh uh, shown in this um, example here for 
for example, Exfel experiment or electron microscopy experiment, and also to ensure compatibility and interoperability between uh, different data resources. For example, the format is used for de de depositing and archiving data by uh, model archive, small angle scattering database, uh, integrative hybrid method, archive at PDB dev, and uh, alpha fold resource. Um, but when we're talking about data diversity and complexity, we're not only talking about various experimental techniques, but also the, the content of the data that we have. Uh, the PDB performs regular archival review projects to maintain consistency and accuracy of data representation across the whole archive, and also to make sure that the data are brought up to date over the latest uh, developments in structured determination methods and technologies. Um, one of the recent projects uh, was aimed to improve uh, carbo uh, representation of structures containing carbohydrates, and that was done to facilitate broader usage of the resource by the glycoscience community and researchers study studying glycoproteins. Um, the scope I kind of uh, highlighted here, I'm not gonna read it out, but the project enabled better visualization, validation, search, and classification of such structures. And in the nearest future, we are planning for another project that is to improved um, representation of structures containing post-translational modifications. Uh, and of course, as I mentioned before, the data validation is the key. Uh, all data in the protein data bank are uh, val thoroughly validated. We um, assess quality of the structural model, associated experimental data, and the fit between them. Uh, we use community agreed validation standards and software tools, like the, those recommended by the method specific validation task forces. Um, as you can see from this timeline, um, PDB validation uh, uh, processes are constantly evolved and enhanced to include better validation metrics and checks to cover uh, more and more various experimental techniques and we are still planning for um, further improvements in those, um, for, for the structures sold by those uh, rapidly evolving uh, techniques as uh, uh, XFL, serial crystallography, cryo-electron microscopy, cryo-electron tomography, and um, integrative hybrid methods. The, the goal is, of course, uh, to make sure that our users, I mean, you guys, um, uh, receive the data that are reliable and uh, reproducible. Oops. Yeah, and with that, I would like to thank the uh, RCSB Protein Data Bank team, uh, our funders, and the Worldwide Protein Data Bank uh, partnership. And thank you for your attention. Happy to take any questions. Maybe uh, I, I can ask okay. uh, um, a question regarding the, the, the fact that you have three major um, uh, 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 yes and, uh, and the, the, the coordination so you, you share the, I suppose that the new format was because it was easier to exchange. Um, it is easier to exchange and we have the all, we have three sites one in. Uh, US, another one is UK, yeah. in the UK, and another one is in Japan, yep. and we share the same uh, uh, deposition and bio-curation system. Uh, it's all based on MMC format and the MMC dictionary, so uh, presumably <laughs> the data that it doesn't matter where, which center the data comes in, the, 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 the final product is, is the same, you know. And what, the same what's the, ti the time lag that is uh, someone submitting in Japan uh, then how long will it take for the US site to have the information? Is that instantaneous or do you have it's on, it's on daily. It's on daily basis. We synchronize data like on daily basis. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is, bit, yeah. Well, the, the release, um, uh, the entries are released uh, once a week. Mm -hmm. So we release uh, the new releases once a week, but so we, of course, the, all the 
data are prepared, uh, you know, among different sites and put in the one central uh, place and then released to the public uh, every Wednesday. Okay. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you.